President Joe Biden recently signed a debt ceiling bill preventing the country from the default. The agreement came with a lot of compromise from the White House and Republican negotiators. Now, one of the tension points, federal student loans. Republicans wanted to get rid of Biden's forgiveness plan in the deal. They were not successful with that. Instead, they got the president to agree on ending the student loan payment pause next month. So you'll remember the president introduced a plan last year canceling up to $20,000 in debt for many borrowers. Right now we're waiting to see uh, what the ruling will be from the Supreme Court, and that's expected in the next few weeks to see if it stands. Today we're joined by Betsy Moyette, the president of the Institute of Student Loan Advisors. She's here to discuss all things student loan. Okay, so we're going to take your questions to our expert today. So this is what you do. You text the number that's on your screen. That's 336-379. 5775 and it gets your question to Betsy. All right, so first and foremost, let's kind of like I'll start at the beginning, right? Uh, the debt ceiling agreement seems to have left the uh, debt relief alone. So what does this mean for the program and for the borrowers? So the short answer is, is that where the debt ceiling landed sort of didn't change anything as far as the future of potential student loan relief or when the repayment uh, when repayments were going to restart. The Department of Education has really given some strong hints that this really was going to be the last pause and that we should expect student loans to begin repayment again uh, about 60 days after we get the ruling from the Supreme Court. And essentially what Congress did with the debt ceiling is they, they put the ball back in the Supreme Court's court, so to speak. Uh, so essentially, we're really not in any different a situation than we were prior to the debt ceiling bill. All right. So the Supreme Court, if they should block the debt relief, do we think that the White House has a plan B or is it just going to be kind of dead in the water? Well, that's a good question. And it's a question that we get a lot. There are some other things coming down the pike that will potentially provide significant relief, maybe not as straightforward uh, and immediate as a ten or twenty thousand dollar loan forgiveness fight, but would provide some significant relief. The White House hasn't indicated or even hinted that there is a so-called Plan B, meaning perhaps another legal avenue to hit immediate forgiveness, like this current debt relief. So I think they're going to focus more on these other programs that are in process right now of being approved to provide long-term relief to especially the most vulnerable borrowers. Okay, let's um, go down the line of some of the things that it does do or doesn't do, the whole debt ceiling agreement. It says no more repayment pauses. So when do borrowers expect to have their next payment due? That's a great question. So there's actually two prongs to this, right? There's when am I gonna have to start making a payment again? But there's also when are my loans gonna start accruing interest again? because that was a huge part of this pause is that the borrowers that were eligible for it have been enjoying a 0% interest rate. And those are kind of two different dates. What we know is that the pause is gonna end 60 days after SCOTUS gives their ruling or 60 days after June 30th, whichever comes first. So that's the moment when borrowers can expect interest to start accruing again. They shouldn't expect their first payment to be due till about 45 or 60 days after that date. So we're looking at like end of September or October before people will actually be due for a payment. Okay, good to know. So later on this fall, so let's prepare ourselves and let's talk about that. What can borrowers do to prepare for the restart of their payments? I love that question. Um, so the, a lot's happened in the past uh, three and a half years or so. Uh, not the smallest thing that's happened is who services the loans has changed for about 17 million borrowers. So the first thing people should do is make sure they know who has their loans. Uh, and they can do that by logging into the Department of Ed's website, which is studentaid.gov. Once they verify who has their loans, they want to make sure that that loan holder has their correct contact information. That's snail mail, email, and phone. Uh, and then once they do make sure that, and they can do that, but just by logging into the servicer account, and if they need to make an update, they can do it right online. And then after that, they want to make sure they open all the things. Um, you know, we can we get used to letting the mail, snail mail pile up on the kitchen counter, or maybe letting emails go by, especially with student loan stuff because of the pause. 
but we need to get back in the habit of, of opening all those things. And one of the things you're looking for is what is your payment going to be? Um, and once you know what your payment's going to be, is it a payment you can afford? And if the answer is no, it's time to start examining what your options are, what the lower payment options are, should you apply for one and so on. Okay, and I don't want people to miss it. There is one spot that you should go and look for who has your student loan, and that is? Studentaid.gov. Okay, because there's going to be lots of people who want to text you, email you, call you, and tell you that they can help you find out who your loan is with. You don't need anybody's help. You need to go directly to studentaid.gov. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're taking your questions when we come back.